Welcome to Running Hot Action Network's Motorsports Betting Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Giffen, predictive analyst here at Action Network. And joining me, my co-host, Stephen Young of Roto Grinders, better known as Stevie TPFL. And this week, we're talking bets for the worth 400 at Dover Motor Speedway here on Running Hot. Last weekend at Talladega, Michael McDowell threw a late block on Brad Keselowski coming to the line and spinning McDowell out trying to make that block thus starting the big one right at the end of the race while battling for the lead and as a result Tyler Reddick barely avoided McDowell was able to pass Keselowski in the process and took home the win with Keselowski coming in second and Noah Gregson getting his first top three finish with a third place finish at Talladega but I do think the big story Stevie of course was all the fuel save at Talladega and then when it was go time, it was just two single file trains. Is that kind of what you thought from Talladega? Yeah, so I my daughter had a volleyball tournament this past weekend. So I went back and I, I watched the last 20 laps. Like we got to dinner to watch the last like 20 <laughs> laps. So I went back and I watched because, I mean, you know, this is what we do. So I feel like you yeah. have to go watch. And I feel like it was kind of how I expected. A lot of two wide racing. Um, the third line, every time it tried to get, someone would make a dumb move and like the third line would kind of go away. I don't blame McDowell for making the block that he did, but I think McDowell has a chance to win that race if he just holds the top there. Um, I don't know. It, like It doesn't wreck the field if that happens, but I don't know. The fuel saving and... All of this is what we talked about last week. It just adds another like aspect into the unpredictability of these races. So, I mean, I hate it. I mean, I think everyone kind of hates the fuel mm. saving, but it's what Talladega and Daytona are now. I mean, you know, you want you want your driver running like fifth in line instead of first in line because you know they're going to be able to save more fuel. So, I mean, I I, I hated it for Gregson because I really liked where Gregson was at at the end of that race yep. and we had top four bets on him. So yep. I liked where he was at, but <laughs> overall, I, I mean, the, what were the Toyotas doing? I mean, we, we skip over everything else and like John Hunter runs through Bubba when they're running in a pack of five, instead of just kind of letting off when he got him a little loose and like it ended up wrecking like the whole Toyota field. So the whole race yep. is different if that caution doesn't happen because I think the Toyotas were going to be in a good spot kind of looking at their lap times compared to the big field. So I think they were going to cycle to the lead and it was going to be Toyota out in front of Ford at the end of the race. Yeah, I agree with that. That uh, caution there uh, with the Toyotas having kind of taken a little bit of an alternate strategy to try to get a, a breakaway uh, while the rest of the group was still saving, uh, I thought was a very interesting strategy. But yeah, like you, I only... Live, I only got to see the last uh, 25 or 30 laps or so because I was, of course, at the Long Beach Grand Prix watching the IndyCar race, and that ended uh, right around middle end of stage two for the cup race. And so I was able to catch the end like you. I went back and watched it and saw uh, some of the strategies there and, and how they played out. But I agree. It wasn't the most entertaining Talladega race we've seen, uh, and I think public opinion uh, kind of agrees with us there. But that was Talladega this week. We're heading to Dover Motor Speedway. Dover is a one-mile concrete track. It's pretty steeply banked, so I tend to throw it in the steep tree, steep track category. Uh, so, Stevie, Dover Motor Speedway, uh, kind of we're, we're using this inter intermediate package again, which we have seen uh, at Texas. We saw it at Las Vegas. Technically, we used it at Bristol. So what are your thoughts on racing this weekend at Dover? What can fans expect to see when they're watching? Kind of the same things we saw the last couple of years, same tire that we run at Dover the last couple of years. We can't really compare it to Bristol this year because the tire wear at Bristol is going to make that race just unique in itself. I mean, I don't know if we're going to be able to compare Bristol to Bristol um, because of the tire. I highly doubt they bring that tire back. I hope they do. It was different. It was fun. Um, so, yeah, kind of looking, if anything, at maybe a little bit of Las Vegas, go into that like steep type of track to try to get some data. But a lot of what I'm looking at this year is like who's run good at Dover the last two years with the, this tire and the package. And we really haven't seen like a huge difference in like this intermediate package on these tracks. So I think it's just really kind of looking at who's been good at Dover recently. 
Yeah, I agree with that. And I, I will say the racing at Dover, I think, has been pretty good. I remember, yeah. uh, you know, the first year of the next-gen car, Ross Chastain and Martin Truex Jr. running side-by-side side for most of those last handful of laps there. And then Truex got a little angry and, and uh, spun himself out trying to kind of door slam Ross Chastain there coming towards, uh, I think it was the white flag. But, uh, yeah, Dover has produced pretty good racing. And, and the line tends to move around there, right, as rubber gets picked up and put down because it is a concrete track. And uh, so it, like, reflects the sunlight more than it absorbs it, uh, which asphalt tracks tend to do with the, the darker coloring. So we get a lot of interesting line movement throughout Dover. And I think that's one thing where, you know, you mentioned you can use a little bit of Las Vegas. But I think any track where the line kind of moves around throughout can be kind of a, a you know, a tertiary or so, secondary or tertiary comp for Dover. Another thing I do like to look at is just steep, steeper tracks in general, your uh, homesteads, your Darlingtons, your Bristols, because I find when you pull in all the steep tracks together, uh, at least in my model throughout the years, that has shown to be, have some predictability at Dover when building a, you know, a model that makes future predictions more accurately. So uh, I definitely like to pull in some of the steep track stuff as well, but very much a lot of track history uh, at Dover. So Stevie, uh, how are we looking to handicap this race? Yeah. I mean, handicapping for me early in the week is going to be some of the picks that we're going to talk about are just guys that I feel like have some value that have run well here at Dover the last couple of years in the steep tracks. And then I, I think I'm going to do a lot of my betting after like practice and qualifying. Um, cause we typically, even in a shorter practice, get some good data in practice because like, how Dover works is the tire rubber will get put down. And then once you're on your cool down laps, it will pick the rubber back up. So like we'll, we'll likely see very similar racetracks to start practice unless like a lot of guys in practice early and we don't get like cool down laps to pick up all the rubber. Um, so I think practice is going to be huge and I'm be, I'll be betting um, a lot more like matchups, top tens, top t and maybe even some outrights after practice and qualifying this week. But I feel like, uh, again, this whole season has felt like, all right, who has the early week value that's going to move? And we're going to talk about a few of them that, I, I mean, we're on the same page a lot of stuff this week, just in general, yep. because there is some value. And these guys are going to have this type of value. We're already see seeing it move a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, these are the bets that we're going to talk about. I think all almost all of the bets we're going to bring up today and talk about are going to move after practice and qualifying, if not before. I would agree with that. And this is an interesting week for me uh, because as I look at my model, there isn't like for me, there hasn't been a ton of value out there at this point in the week. I think earlier in the week, there was some, especially around guys like Alex Bowman. Uh, but later in the week, you know, as, as the market has been bet into a little bit harder to find value. That said, I do have a couple spots of pretty, pretty big value. So those will be my picks for the show. But outside of, for me, the picks I give, I'm not showing a ton of value. I, you know, I'm looking at the outline and some of your picks and my models like right there, like it could be super thin value or just barely not. But then that's like model error. Whereas like if your model showing value, what I like to say is, well, let's do some model averaging because that tends to be a more accurate thing. So if mine's like right on the cusp of showing value and yours is showing value, averaging ours, it would still be showing value. And I'll be like, oh yeah, I can still get behind Stevie's picks. So uh, that's one approach I always use is, is model averaging because we all have our own models, our own ways and kind of a wisdom of the crowds approach, approach tends to be the most accurate in the end. But uh, at least as far as the, you know, the four picks I'm giving, I'm really excited about three of them. And then the, the fourth one, as we'll talk about, it'll be kind of a lean-ish depending on the price you can get. But uh, outside of the picks I'm giving this week, it's for me, it's been a tight week. I mean, we've got top 10 lines where Kyle Larson's minus 375. Nobody's ever betting that, right? And, you know, even some of these other guys are minus 200. And for me at Dover, the highest top 10 percentage I have is uh, around 70% with Kyle Larson. So we're just never going to get, you know, any value on guys that are minus 200 when the peak guy is uh, only 70%. So it's going to be a tough week, but we got to make some bets and, uh, you know, there is some value out there. So it is time to dive into those bets. As always, we're going to take you for a lap around Dover Motor Speedway. That's four turns, one pick from Stevie, one pick from me from each turn. Before we drive into victory lane. So it's time to throw the green flag on the worth 400 and dive into turn one.
All right, green flag is out, Stevie, for turn one. We are going to go to that guy I just mentioned. Looks like you've got Alex Bowman here. Yeah, I got Alex Bowman for a top 10 minus 112. Listen, I, I hate doing this because, like, this line's already moving on a lot of books, but there's still two books out there that you can get this number. So jump on it now. It's moving. And it's mm -hmm. moving because Alex Bowman's really good at this racetrack you know we talk about him at dover every single time he missed this race last year his car is so good that josh barry never been to dover in a cup car finished top 10 last year in this race so i mean alex bowman is just a stud you know we look at it five of his last six races here he's finished inside the top five not even top 10 top five i think alex bowman has like the upside to even win this race especially how good hendrick has been this season so the fact that like in the six races here that he's run, the last six races, he has an average finish of 6.2. He finished fifth here in the next-gen race that he actually has run with this car. So I'm very high on Alex Bowman. And, I mean, I probably should have bet his outright, like, two days ago because it's already moving. Um, but, yeah, I like his top 10. It's one of my favorite bets this week. And, I, again, I want to jump on this one fast. Yeah, and I will say about Alex Bowman, they're running a lot better now than they were in the second half of last year, you know, after he came back from his back injury. So that's definitely a plus. And I think that, you know, just the fact that uh, he was running a little poorly towards the second half of last year, my model could be underrating him a little bit. I have him about 4% to win, which would be right in line with that 25 to 1 where he opened. So I didn't bet the 25 to 1 opener. I understand why some people did. Uh, and I think, you know, that's one of those spots where model averaging. Some people were showing a little bit better than 4%. If I'm showing right at 4%, then I could get behind a 25 to 1 outright bet. And also your top 10 at minus 112, because this is a fantastic track, not just for Alex Bowman, but all of Hendrick Motorsports, as I'm sure we'll talk about. But for my turn one pick, this is a mega value for me. This is like really big value. I'm going to take Tyler Reddick to finish as the top Toyota driver. You can get that at plus 925 out there. Uh, and most books have this at plus 800. There is a plus 925, 925 floating out there uh, in a few states. And my model has top Toyota for Reddick at plus 550. I mean, that shows you how big the value is here. And I think this is just a misprice uh, across... a across these sports books i really don't think my model is uh overestimating very often when my model's like really high on somebody and it's really different from the market i'll give it a critical eye and be like yeah maybe my model's being a little too uh generous and and there's a flaw in the model here but i don't think there is i mean tyler reddick is great at these steep tracks that we talk about he's great at homesteads darlington's uh bristol's and he's been good at Dover, too. If you look at uh, what I call my track quality rating, Dover's about a 6% better than average track for him. And if you think an average track for him, he should be about 20, 25 to 1, you know, to win or, or maybe uh, 6 or 7 to 1 for a top Toyota. Then a little bit better than average track for him. That's just too much value here. I mean, we're saying at plus 925 that he's worse than the average Toyota in this race. Now there are nine Toyotas, so eight to one would be fair uh, if all nine were equal. But uh, I, I mean, Tyler Reddick's better than, probably going to be better than Jimmy Johnson, probably going to be better than Corey Heim, who's replacing Eric Jones, probably going to be better than John Hunter and Emacek. So we've already eliminated three of them. And then I could argue that he may be better than Bubba Wallace. He may be better than Ty Gibbs. He may be better than Christopher Bell here. So, you know, we're getting to a point where Tyler Reddick could conceivably be uh, in a model the third or fourth best Toyota here. And that means he should be better than eight to one just off of like kind of that knowledge, but then add in, of course, uh, you know, all this other steep track stuff and, and Tyler Reddick again at Dover has been pretty good as well. He hasn't been amazing. He hasn't led a lap, but he has run pretty well over the years at Dover. So I do think there's a chance that with continued improvement, we saw how great it was at Vegas. We saw how great it was at Texas, the number one green flag speed at Texas, uh, that some of those intermediate tracks, the higher speed intermediate tracks, he, if they comp to Dover this year, he could definitely finish as top Toyota. Yeah. I have no problems with this. Um, I like Christopher Bell a lot to, this week, just in general, um, as a Toyota, but I think the value you're pointing out, right? Like we're, you're not saying, oh, I think that Reddick's the best Toyota. I think Reddick has the best value as a top Toyota. So I think that's, you know, a key thing, right? Like we're not always, we're not always looking at like 
Kyle Larson's the favorite to win this race because Kyle Larson is probably going to be the best car. We're not looking at that. We're looking at like who has the best value. If you make mm-hmm. a lot of plus EV value bets throughout the year, you're likely going to come up, come out ahead because that's how NASCAR works. Like the variance of NASCAR, the best car doesn't win every week. I, and the prime example is Texas. Kyle Larson was in a class of his own at, at Texas and he didn't win the race. So like, it's just yeah. a prime example. Um, so Michael McDowell was in the best position to win Talladega, made a bad block and didn't win the race. So Exactly. You know, I think Tyler Reddick coming off of a high last week. um, Really cool to see MJ in victory lane last week. That was awesome. Yeah, that was definitely really cool. So uh, Tyler Reddick, top Toyota, my pick there. Looking to go back to back for Michael Jordan and Denny Hamlin, the co-owners of 2311 Racing. So that is turn one. Got to roll the corner here through turn two. All right, turn two, Stevie, going to your first outright bet here. What do you got? Yeah, so I'm really interested to hear kind of your thoughts on this and, you know, after I give my thoughts. But my model shows this as one of the best value outrights this week. And I, it, it might just be my model overvaluing Blaney in general. But my model has this as like 10 to 1, 11 to 1 type range. And we're getting it at 16 to 1 here. So, I mean, this you could get this on BetMGM right now at 16 to 1. I like this. I think that... He's an excellent race car driver on steep tracks. He's top five in speed on steep tracks with the next gen car. He ranked first in speed at Dover last year. Like he just stayed inside the top five all day. He didn't have like that dominant speed, but he was good all race. And the Fords have been better this season than they were last year. So maybe getting that extra little hump will put him as like a dominant car instead of just like a top three car. So I really like Blaney. I think this is a really good spot to bet him early in the week. Um, he's a guy that typically qualifies really well at Dover. He's top five in both races here the last two years with the next gen car. If he qualifies in the top five, we're not going to touch the 16 to one number. So again, early week, I think this is one that I really like. And I'm really interested. Like I said, my model might just be overvaluing Blaney, but like I dug into it, man. Like he's good on steep tracks. He's good at Dover. He's been better um, with this package. Like I, I get, I can get on this one, and that's why I bet it already. Yeah, here's the thing for me. So my my model is showing sixteen to one, almost exactly on the dot as okay. fair value on Blaney. But I think there's a couple caveats here um, that you kind of alluded to. You say he's good on steep tracks. Now Blaney is notoriously not good at at like Darlington and Homestead, some of these higher tire wear tracks, but right. Dover isn't quite like that. So I think we, if, if my model discounted those, I do think Blaney would be a value at 16 to one. Uh, but it is hard to be a value at 16 one. When you have Kyle Larson absorbing a lot of the win probability from in my model, Martin Truex Jr., Danny Hamlin, uh, William Byron, Ross Chastain, Chase Elliott, uh, you know, and then my model likes Tyler Reddick and Ty Gibbs as well. Uh, so if my model's too high on Tyler Reddick, then that could also be another way that Blaney does end up being <laughs> a value, those kinds of things. So uh, in the model averaging vein, if mine is showing fair at 16 to one and yours is showing fair at like 11 or 12 to one, then when we average those, there is value at 16 to one. So that's where I can definitely get behind a Blaney 16 to one outright. And I do like him here at Dover. I mean, like you said, finished third last year, ran on the top five, most of that race. So this is a good track for Ryan Blaney for my turn to pick. Now I know you like Christopher Bell, but I'm going to go with Chase Elliott over Christopher Bell because we're getting this at plus 115. And my model has Chase Elliott favored here. Now, the reason is when we look at Chase Elliott's stats at Dover, they're just bonkers. Like, this is probably his best track in the Cup Series. Uh, of his uh, his 13 starts in the Cup Series, he had two DNFs, and then he had a finish of 11th last year and one other finish of 12th. Aside from that, he's finished in the top five every single time. So nine out of the 13 starts, he's finished inside the top five. He has two wins uh, here in 13 starts. I mean, this is just a amazingly good track for Chase Elliott. And Chase Elliott is kind of like Alex Bowman. He's kind of back this year. You know, the those guys who were injured last year, who missed part of last year with injury and then struggled, Elliott and Bowman, they're kind of back. I wouldn't say they're all the way back, but, you know, Chase Elliott has a win under his belt now. Uh, and... He, he's running much better this year than he was towards the second half last year. And my model's still showing him as a favorite to 
Christopher Bell in this matchup. And, you know, Dover is a good track for Christopher Bell. It hasn't been the best in the Cup Series, but if you go down to, like, Xfinity and stuff, it's been a much better track for, for Christopher Bell. But that makes this pretty much a coin flip. Now, my model has Chase Elliott slightly favored here, so getting plus money on this. But even if it was a coin flip, getting it plus money, uh, you kind of have to back Chase Elliott here. So I'm going to take Chase Elliott at plus odds to finish ahead of Christopher Bell. I actually have um, Elliot favored in this head-to-head as well. As much as I like Bell, um, it's yeah. more of just kind of like, I think Christopher Bell has some value this week. That's why I like him. Um, but I, I do have Chase. Like Chase is, like you said, this is one of his best tracks. He's performing better on track. His pit crew um, has been phenomenal. They're like third in average pit stop this year. That's kind of one of the things I wanted to talk about with Christopher Bell. He lost so many positions last year with his pit crew. They're second yeah. in average pit crew time. So, when they made the switch last year from Ty Gibbs getting um, Bell's crew and vice versa, they never switched it back. So Bell's pit crew is Ty Gibbs' pit crew from last year. So And they've been phenomenal. So, I mean, overall, it's been a huge increase for Bell, just in general for me this year, because how many pit road positions he lost oh, last I know, year. yeah. <laughs> and so, like, that's a bump. And that's why one of the reasons I like Bell, because I do think Dover is a good track for Bell. I think it's a Chevy weekend uh, as much as I hate to say it. Like I think yeah. Chevy is going to be the team to beat. So with chase being one of his best tracks and just kind of overlooking last year because of the injury. Um, I think that I, I, I like this one as well. Um, I don't mind this head to head at all. Yeah. So I, like I said, I have chase slightly favored. I think it's like 52 and a half percent or something like that for, for chase Elliott, which would make, you know, around minus minus one ten uh, a fair line on chase Elliott. So Definitely like getting the plus money here and agree with everything you said on Bell. Look, my model on Bell, it doesn't have his outright win probability very high, but it has his top 10 probability really high. So it likes Christopher Bell's uh, ability to drive here really well. It just doesn't think his upside is quite peak there. Um, so that's why I'm not betting like Christopher Bell outrights, but I certainly don't mind if you want to look at something like a top 10 uh, or, or anything like that as well but my turn to official pick is chase elliott over christopher bell stevie's is ryan blaney to win 16 to 1 at bet mgm all right so that is two turns down two turns to go we're gonna drive down the back stretch toward turn three okay stevie turn three it looks like you're going to a driver that uh i like as well i'll be talking about him in turn four what do you got for us yeah, I almost moved it, um, and then I was like, oh, I'll just leave it um, because I got busy more than anything you, else. <laughs> we, we could have swapped it because, yeah. you know, you got my driver's teammate here yeah. in turn four, so we could have gone with the teammates in turn three and, and Busher in turn four, yeah. but hey, we'll, we'll, you know, I'm moving my turn four pick to turn three, so turn yes. three, Stevie, what do you got? Oh, having some fun here on the Running Hot <laughs> Podcast. Um, exactly. <laughs> just... I mean, I have Chris Buescher for a top 10. It's plus 115 right now at BetMGM. I'm showing this as like fair value all the way down to like minus 120. So uh, Buescher is one of three active drivers to finish inside the top 10 in both next-gen races here. He's finished eighth and ninth. He's been like a, a sixth to eighth place car in both races. And like, that's enough value for me to bet him at plus money. Um, like I said, I'd bet this down to like minus 120. So I, Buescher is just... Nikki's just consistently good. Like uh, yeah. Chris Buescher is one of the most underrated race car drivers in the series. And I feel like, and I hate to say this because like RFK is trending in the right direction, but if you had Chris Buescher in like a Hendrick motorsports car, he'd probably have like five to eight wins over the last two years. So I mm -hmm. just, Buescher is consistently good. He gets better throughout the race. He's great at giving information to his crew chief to make the car better. And he's good at Dover. So again, like, you know, he's another guy that I like on steep tracks. We talk about him at Bristol all the time. Um, I think Busher is in a good spot to get a top 10. And I was shocked when I opened up the, the lines this week and saw this at plus money. Yeah, here's the thing. I think Chris Busher, uh, like everything you mentioned, is really good here. He's really good at some of the similar tracks, too. Like, remember there was a year he, like, dominated Homestead for a while before he fell off. It was the first year of the next-gen car. Uh, and Chris Busher has always been good at Bristol, uh, another, you know, obviously similar track comp for Dover here. So I think in addition to Dover, a lot of the similar tracks, Chris Buescher has also been good. So my turn three pick, I'm moving Chris Buescher out of turn four into turn three, and I'm going to take him 30 to one to win. Now I will say I want to be price sensitive here personally, because I have 30 to one 
as decent value, but 25 to one as super thin value. I mean, I have right 25 to one means uh, you need to have him win 3.85 percent of the time to break even. And I have 4.05 percent. So it's it is value at 25 to one, but it's so incredibly thin. That would be like a lean for me at 25 to one, but there is a 30 to one out there. And so I will take Chris Buescher to win at 30 to one and just echoing everything you have said about Chris Buescher here. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm right there. Really. I got all good things to say about Chris Buescher. So turn three is the Chris Buescher turn Stevie top 10 plus 115 at BetMGM. MGM and my pick Chris Buescher to win 30 to one for just a little sprinkle uh, because it's not the most like it's not a huge value at 30 to one when I'm saying 25 to one is a very thin lean. Uh, so just a sprinkle, you know, like a quarter unit bet, maybe a, a third of a unit bet on Chris Busher uh, at 30 to one, if you're able to get that. So three turns down, we got one final turn. It's time to roll the corner in turn four. All right. Final turn, Stevie, we're going to go to track house racing. Who you got for your pick? I'm just going to start this by saying my model does not agree with me on this one. Um, it's not showing value at this line at all, and I don't care. Um, I like Ross Chastain for a top five. I like Ross Chastain to potentially win this race, but I like his top five at plus 140. I think Ross Chastain has the upside, and he, he's had the speed, right? He's been the fastest car if we're averaging the two Dover races. He's been the fastest car. He's ahead of Martin Truex Jr. He's ahead of Chase Elliott. He's ahead of Danny Hamlin. He's ahead of Ryan Blaney. So Chastain's just really good at this racetrack. And like when he got in good equipment, when he first started to get in good equipment, like the steep tracks really stood out to me for Chastain. Like Darlington race when he was running for um, Chip Ganassi in an Xfinity race one time, we were like, oh my gosh, Ross Chastain actually might be really good. So <laughs> I'm just throwing my model out on this one because like I said, it's just not showing value at all. And I'm just trusting what I know and what I see. I'm trusting the guy that's averaging 40 fastest laps in the two races here. He's a guy that runs inside the top five all the time. And he's the only driver to finish inside the top five in both races here with the next-gen car. Third and second. Like, he's had the upside to win. Does that late caution last year? Like, had Chastain not missed his pit, like, when they told him to pit and, like, pitted on the lap, he probably wins the race last year over Truex. Yeah. So... And then they took four tires like dummies. I just so many ways Chastain could have won that race last year and they and he didn't. So give me Ross Chastain for a top five. And I'll take the top five over the win because I, I do I do want to trust my model a little bit as far as like value, but I'm just throwing it out for this top five bet. Yeah, and I'm right here with you. My model does not have value on this top five bet. Uh, but I'm also right there with you in that, it, it, you know, kind of just got to throw the model out here. My model has about plus 200 as fair, so plus 140. Uh, certainly wouldn't do it in the model, but I, I'm totally with you. I mean, Ross Chastain is so good at Dover. This is like the perfect track type for him. Uh, and so I think this is a spot where, you know, I'm just stamping an override on the model and, and backing you here with Ross Chastain uh, to, to have a great day winning, race winning upside. Uh, so for my turn four pick, I'm going to go to his teammate. I'm going to take Daniel Suarez for a top 10 finish. You get that at plus 430. That's long. My model has like a little shorter than plus 300 as fair for a top 10 finish. It has them at 27% almost on the dot for a top 10 finish. So it's like more like plus 280 or so. Uh, plus 430 is insane. Insane. Look at Daniel Suarez's career at Dover when he's been in good cars. So we'll start back in his first couple of years with Joe Gibbs Racing. His top 15 percentage was 95.6% in his first race with JGR. 90.3%, 99.8%, and then 36.1% in his final race with JGR. But he still finished 10th in that race, uh, and his finishes were all top 10s. Then he moved over to Stuart Haas Racing the next year, uh, which back in 2019, they're about where Trackhouse is, uh, is now, kind of on that second tier of uh, elite teams. So pretty comparable, and Suarez finished 11th and 14th, so not top 10s, but... On the cusp to where plus 430 is mega value, and he had 79.8% of his laps in the top 15 in the first race and, and just 25% in the second race. But now let's move to his track house racing, especially in the next-gen car. And let's look specifically at last year. Daniel Suarez started 15th. He only ran 35 laps because he, he ran into some problems. 
But of those 35 laps that he ran, 88.6% of them were inside the top 15. And given that he started 15th, that means he only fell outside of the top 15 for just four laps and all the rest was inside the top 15. So he moved up ahead of his starting position for a lot of that. So he had close to a top 10 car last year before, of course, you know, he was out of the race on lap 35. So when you're consistently on the border of the top 10 in, you know, relatively similar equipment as he was with Stuart Haas racing back in 2019, this is just a spot where 4.30 is way too long. And I completely agree with my model that it should be around like plus 280 as fair value. So I'm going to take Daniel Suarez, Ross Chastain's track house teammate for a top 10 finish at plus 4.30. Curious your thoughts there. I mean, I already bet this, so that's my thoughts. I mean, like, yeah. I'm right there with you. I was able to get this at plus 450. Um, Ooh. And we all know where I live. So, you know, I think that this is just one of those spots where yeah, it's just undervaluing Daniel Suarez as a driver, but it's also undervaluing like how good track house is. Like if Chastain mm -hmm. is this good on this racetrack, like that, that data is going to be available to Suarez and like Suarez is good at adapting. He's a good race car driver. He's very underrated yeah. too. So um, I'm with you on this one. I, I think this line, like my model is definitely showing value on this top 10. Um, like yeah, a lot. So I, I'm with you. Yep. So Daniel Suarez, top 10 plus 430. Ross Chastain for Stevie, top five plus 140. Our, our turn four picks for the worth 400 at Dover Motor Speedway. That means there's only one thing left to do. Stevie, we just completed a great lap. We got to drive into victory lane. And I'm going to kick this one off, Stevie. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the lead here yeah. because... I love this bet. I approached you on, you know, on our chat and was like, Hey, I want to roll with this. If you're willing to roll with it. And you're like, Oh yeah, I bet this too. So I love this. We're going Tyler Reddick to win 25 to one still available at a few books out there. And this is the, this is the big value I have this week is Tyler Reddick. I gave him as a top Toyota in turn one, uh, 25 to one to win just far too long. My model has him, uh, around 6.4%. I think it is probably a little high, but I don't think it's egregiously high. Uh, and, you know, 25 to 1, like we talked about, is 3.85%. Do I think Tyler Reddick can win this more than 3.85% of the time? Absolutely, given how he has run this year for Toyota at the intermediate tracks in the intermediate package and how good he is at steep tracks and how he's been totally fine at Dover. A lot of top 10 runs, and we was with Richard Childress just barely outside the top 10 runs uh, when he was running for a slightly less competitive team. So I th definitely think there's a spot where Tyler Reddick uh, has more than a 3.85% probability to win the race. What about you? Yeah. One of the fastest cars at Vegas had Kyle Larson not been in that race, like Reddick very mm -hmm. fast. Um, you know, he had an opportunity to win that race. So, I mean, if you're just looking at like the intermediate package tracks, like I think you have to have interest in Tyler Reddick, you know, and, this line's moving quick. Uh, it's another one that like it, it's not going to stick around um, very long. So you got to jump on this one fast. And you know we 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 just again want to find this early week value that we think is going to move because like the lines have gotten sharper. Yeah. The the models are catching up as far as like Vegas just in general. So this is just one that like if you look at his finishes, you're like, eh, he can't win this race. But if you look at the speed. And you look at the things that this team is doing this year, you're like, yeah, he can win this race. So, yeah, me and you both on this one, when you messaged me, I was like, yeah, I already bet this. Perfect. Victory lane solved. <laughs> um, and usually, like, when we're on a lot of the same stuff, it's a good week. So, I mean, we're we're on the same page a lot this week. And, um, yeah, I mean, I did yeah. before we before we sign off. Like, is it – I need to know. I'm asking a friend because you're my friend. I'm asking a friend. Is it okay for me – to bet Larson like two to one to win at Darlington with that paint scheme that he's running. I need to know if that's, <laughs> if that's going to be okay. Like as soon as it drops, I'm betting it. I don't care. Um, how awesome is that car, that Terry Labonte um, paint scheme for Kyle Larson for Darlington? Yeah. You know, one thing I don't have built into my model is uh, paint schemes oh, and their probability of, of adding to your <laughs> win ability. You know, we always talk about the Martin Truex Jr. Auto, auto owners scheme because he always seems to perform better than that. But maybe we have to give a bump to Kyle Larson in the Terry Labonte 
throwback. That thing looks so oh, it's like, bad. What was it? It, it was, was amazing. It was Kyle Busch in the Skittles car. Like any time that he ran the Skittles paint scheme, that car yep. was like cheated up or something. It was insane. <laughs> Yeah, so be on the lookout for Kyle Larson at Darlington. But for Dover, that is going to do it for us. Thank you for listening to the Worth 400 episode of Running Hot Action Network's Motorsports Betting Podcast. We'll be back this time next week as we talk bets for the Advent Health 400 at Kansas Speedway. On behalf of my co-host, Stephen Young, thanks again for listening. We'll see you back here on Running Hot from Action Network.